Hello, and welcome to Extreme DIY, brought to you by 8020. This episode, we're gonna take a look at a compressor cart. This cart is perfect for at home in your garage or in the shop. This cart provides a mobile, durable, and convenient workstation. It is highly versatile and loaded with features. The top panel acts as a work table and also lifts up to reveal storage for tools. The lower shelf adds even more space while the inset panels helps keep tools from falling out while in motion. The lower area holds a small compressor or can also be used for wet vacs, power sprayers, and much more. The cart has brackets to store and organize air hoses, cables, tubes, and extension cords. There's also a power strip mounted directly to the T-slot. Before we begin, we want to point out that this video provides a general overview of the assembly steps for this solution. For a more detailed step-by-step -step assembly guide, design files, and much more, please visit 8020.net. Now with any project, we want to set everything out and verify we got all of our parts and pieces, and the tools we'll need. That's right. For this project, we'll be using three different wrenches, a quarter, a 3 16 a 5 30 seconds, and we'll also be using a half-inch box-end wrench and a Phillips head screwdriver. For building this cart, we're going to work from the ground up. We'll start with our base, then our casters. We'll move on to the uprights, then the bottom shelf, and finish it off with the top compartment and lid. For this build, our connection method is going to be the anchor fastener. It's one of our strongest connection methods, but also allows for adjustable positioning. So for our base, we need to build a basic U-shape. But before we join these profiles together, we need to preload the front and rear short profile with two T-nuts. These will be used in a future build step when we're mounting our casters. Now once we have all of our profiles together, we're going to slide in our bottom panel. And for this, we picked our diamond plate. It's not only thin enough to slide into the open T-slot, but also strong enough to hold our air compressor. Now to finish our base, we're going to be working on our uprights. We'll take our longest profiles Put those into the corner section and secure those with some anchor fasteners. Once we have that all tightened down, we'll be ready to move on to our casters. So we flipped our cart over and we're going to install our casters. For the back ones, we're going to start with one long bolt and a washer and we'll thread it into the corner upright. Now once we have that one all the way tightened down, from there we'll take a shorter bolt and a washer and we'll install it into our back profile where we already have a T-nut. After we install that one, we'll take a T-nut and we'll slide it into our side profile and we'll tighten it down with a short bolt and washer. Now the swivel casters will mount in virtually the same method. The only difference being is that instead of a bolt going through into the profile end, we'll be sliding in a couple T-nuts and tightening those down with a bolt and washer. As you can see, we've started to add on to our base. We've got one side of our upright complete and to install the other half, We'll put our panel into place. We'll add our vertical upright and we'll cap it all off with one more bar. Now to tighten it all down, we're gonna use anchor fasteners. Once that's complete, we'll be ready to install our back panel. The back panel, similar to the rear storage panel, has a hole machined into it. This will allow us to funnel our cables in to our power supply. Once that's in place, we'll be ready to move on to our shelf. Now that we've got that complete, we're ready to add on the bottom bar for the base portion of our shelf. But before we do that, we need to preload the arms that will act as our cord wrap. To do this, we're simply going to take the anchor fastener, preload it into our half size profile, and slide that into position, then tighten that down with our wrench. Once that's complete, we're going to take our bracket with two T-nuts and two bolts slide that into position, and then we're gonna tighten that down. Once that's complete, we'll then be able to take this assembled piece and put it into position. Once we get that back bar into position, we're gonna take our panel and slide it into position for the shelf, and we'll cap it off with our front bar using anchor fasteners. We've moved on to building our storage cubby section of the cart. To do this, we've added these upright supports on each end, and these crossbars on each end joined together by anchor fasteners. 
we're now ready to move on to our rear support bar. This is going to hold these clips, which will be used to hold on our power strip. To get these ready, we simply threaded through a bolt, joined our T-nut, and then we'll slide this into position. Once that's done, we'll be ready to put our rear bar into position. Now before we put our front bar on, we're going to add a couple of 1530 profiles using anchor fasteners. These are going to serve as our hose wrap later on. And the great thing about them is you can adjust the anchors for larger or smaller size hoses. Now from there, we'll add our panel in for the bottom of the cubby and put the front bar on. We went ahead and dropped our next four panels into place for the top of our build and we're going to cap off the back panel with a profile. We're going to preload two hinges into that profile and it's going to help us open our lid later on. Now once we have that into place, we're ready to move on to our side support. While Andrew's working on the back bar which is holding our hinges, I'm going to go ahead and work on our side supports. To do this, we're simply going to place the profile over the open end of this panel, make sure the front is flush, and you'll also notice that the back overhangs. We did that to buy us a little extra room for our handle. Now for our lid, we went ahead and preloaded three bolts and three T-nuts. From there, we'll take our radius bar and load it onto our lid and tighten it down. After that, we'll take that assembly and attach it to our hinges using the radius bar. We'll get all that tightened down, and from there, we'll move on to our handle and our finishing touches. We're now ready to assemble and install our handle. To start, we're going to preload two bolts and two T-nuts into this pivot arm, where they're going to take our extra bolt and use that to mount the pivot arm to the handle rod. Once we're done with that, we're ready to mount our handle to our cart. We're almost done with our project, but there's a few more things we want to do. We're going to add some end caps to our exposed profile ends, and we're going to add some panel gasket to cut down on noise in our panels. Some other great things to consider are T-slot cover, a cup holder, or document holders for the inside of your lid. Well, that wraps up this session of 8020 Extreme DIY. For more useful information, to download a project plan or other design files, please visit 8020.net. We hope you've enjoyed this segment of 8020's Extreme DIY, and we look forward to seeing you again next time. But until then, thanks for watching, and as always, make it a great day.